It is Monday, July 3rd, 2023. This is another edition of Baseball Today presented to you by Bird Dogs. That is my man, Trevor Plouffe. I am Chris Rose, producer Dan along for the ride as well. And yeah, I mentioned it's presented by Bird Dogs. Once again, people, it is time for you to get involved because on Friday we will have our Bird Dogs question of the week. So make sure you check out our social media channels. You ask us a question. You know what we like. We like to be challenged. We don't like, hey, what do you think of the St. Louis Cardinals this year? No, no, no. That's not what we like. We like something that's challenging, uh, entertaining. If we pick it, you will be rich, famous, and you're going to get a Baseball Today t-shirt that hopefully will fit. So there you go. Ploofy, hope you had a really good weekend out there. How you doing? I did great. I watched a lot of youth baseball. Teddy's still going with the All Stars. So, I mean, my last couple of days have been straight on the like at the field for almost twelve hours a day, just really soaking it all in. But we had a good time. I love seeing the smile on his face, all that good stuff. Uh, but I'm ready to talk some Major League Baseball. Yes. With you, yeah. Well, Rosie. before we we get to the All Star Game uh, discussion, uh, I want to do a little tip of the cap, and this goes to Blake Sable of the San Francisco Giants over the weekend. Ball hit by Jeff McNeil. One hopped into the stands. Fan touched it. Ball's dead. Mets fans start booing because they thought it prevented a run. Umpires got together, said run would have scored anyway. And then Sable, even though that cost the Giants a run, goes over to the kid, gives him a little fist pump, which I loved. And then afterward, they had a chance to meet. That's what baseball is all about. And from all indications, Blake Sable is exactly that type of dude. Oh, I thought we were watching something. Yes, no, I, I he's great, dude. I, I can't believe that um, that you weren't going to do this because you mentioned you might not do this. I love the tip of a cap, and I love Blake Sable. And, you know, whenever a fan intervenes in a game, especially when it's a kid like that, you don't know what to feel. The rest of the day, he was probably sitting – or the rest of the game, until Blake went up to him, he's probably sitting there like, man, what did I just do? What did I just do? Uh, this helps everyone, so I love it. It's a great, great act by him, and he's a rookie, young guy. To be able to yep. do this and have the wherewithal, I thought it's uh, pretty special. Yeah, that was awesome. All right, let's get to it. Uh, All-Star Reserves and Pitchers announced on Sunday. I want to focus on some of the positive stuff. We'll get to the people, oh, this guy got snubbed, then that guy got snubbed. But the best story of all the guys who made it, in your opinion, is? Well, you know I love my Cuban ball players, so I'm going to go with the near Cano. Now, if you followed his kind of, oh, you were, oh, I should have known that. Son of a gun. That's okay. That's okay. If you follow kind of, you know, his path in the big leagues, it's been, it's been interesting. You know, he was with Minnesota last year. Um, didn't really have a great start to the year. Gets traded over to uh, Baltimore in the, um, what's the deal I'm looking for? Lopez deal. The Lopez deal. Excuse me. Yes. Javi Lopez. Or not. No, George Lopez, Jorge Lopez, Jorge Lopez. Yeah, wait, Jesus Christ! I was thinking Pablo Lopez, Jorge Lopez deal. Uh, doesn't have a great start to his Baltimore uh, career there. Even at the beginning of the year, I don't even think he made the team out of spring training. Uh, but then comes over and he's just been one of the biggest reasons the Baltimore Orioles have been uh, where they're at uh, and have the record that they have. You know, the bullpen has been really good. Uh, him and Bautista in the back end of it. We talk about their starting pitching all the time. And you know, they've had some guys have some good years and, and Bradish and Wells and, you know, Gibby does his thing from time to time, but really the back end of the bullpen is, is the reason uh, that they're in that position. The offense has been giving him leads and they've been holding the leads. So I'll go with the near Cano. I think it's a cool story. And you know, I love my Cubans, man. Yeah. That's why I'm wearing the Baltimore hat. I was going to go with Cano as well. Just to add a little bit more to the story, and Dan Connolly, who unfortunately recently was released by The Athletic, wrote a wonderful profile on him a little bit over a month ago. So if you're on The Athletic, go read it, go find it. Um, he didn't. He and his wife didn't just leave Cuba, right, the way that some ball players do. He went through, quote-unquote, the proper channel. So a ton of paperwork. It took over a year, and during that time, Cuba didn't even allow him to partake in baseball on Cuban fields. So his craft was put on hold for a whole year. He couldn't work out there at all. Eventually, he works his way to the Dominican, gets discovered, all sorts of stuff, gets a nice little signing bonus from the Twins, doesn't exactly work out. He had 18 innings in the show before this season. Had to go and get, uh, he had to go earn a roster spot 
in spring training. And now he's got this. He's got a beautiful young family. He has a little son that came along a couple months ago. Things are twisting for him. I love it. Also, uh, the Rooker deal out in, in Oakland, voted in by the players as the second best DH behind Shohei Otani. Go look at Mark Kotze delivering the news to him and how much it meant to him. A guy who's been through four organizations, even though he was a high pick, has finally kind of made his stance. I thought those were cool stories. Yeah, I, I, Rooker was the other one I was going to talk about as well. So we're kind of on the same page uh, today. Yeah. Uh, stoked for him, like you mentioned, going through that many organizations and having to deal with with different hitting coaches and kind of, you know, believe like believing or not believing in yourself. When you start to move around like that and you're searching for a home, um, it can be difficult. Now he had this great start to the year. He's kind of tapered off the last couple of months, uh, but did enough uh, in the player's eyes that first, first month to get the all-star nod. And, you know, somebody has to go from the A's and I'm happy it's yeah, him, man. He deserves right. it. Okay. A few other things. Um, just while I'm spitballing here, we have to change the rule. Finally, let's please change the rule. Michael Lorenzen basically admitted he was almost embarrassed. Like, he's psyched to be going to Seattle, but he said, I, I couldn't believe it when A.J. Hinch mentioned my name. He's like, I have an ERA in the mid-fours. What, what am I doing? And I think we're all figuring, like, what are we doing? You're saying that you don't want to have every team represent. No. No, I'm, I'm done with that. I'm done with it. I, I think it's over. If we're going to truly say it's a star of stars game, then let's make it that. Let's make it the best team possible. Let's not do the whole. Well, it, it shouldn't be star of stars. It shouldn't be star of stars either. I don't like the popularity contest thing. I, I understand that, but at least the guy. In what world does Michael Lorenzen deserve to? And I'm not here to pick on him. I, I think it's a shame that we're doing this, but. The way the game has is being set up now, we're focused on Michael Lorenzen, the Michael Lorenzens of the world today. I think what you could have done is had Erod be on the team, give him the All Star nod, and obviously you have to give his roster spot away. But so I think this is an interesting choice for them. I I guess here's the other thing. You know, I, see, I, but I like I like everyone represented. I, I think that that it, that that should mean something. And now I, I know okay. this is a bad instance of it, but I'm I'm usually I'm like not okay with stuff like that. For this reason, for the All Star Game, I'm 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 on board with it. Listen, dude, I grew up in Cleveland, Ohio. It took my team 24 years to finish higher than third in its division. There were plenty of years I only had one representative to grow to grow up and root for. I was going to watch the game regardless. So here's one other thing: the Pete Alonso stuff really bothers me. I do believe I'm not a big conspiracy person. I'm not. I am not. This one is league driven. He was a league selection. He didn't announce he was in the home run derby until he knew he made the all-star team. They want him in the home run derby, which has really become a bigger deal. And I love him in the home run derby. I think he's fun because you can root for or against him. I don't think there's a lot of guys that are that way. So I understand that aspect. I wanted him in the home run derby, <clears throat> but this is some bullshit. It, it is. He waited until he found out, and then last night he's all mic'd up, and he's telling the guys, and Carl Ravitch and Eduardo Perez are like, oh, yeah, yay, we get him in the home run derby on ESPN. I like those guys. I, I like them. I've had good conversations with them, but come on, guys. Let's just call it exactly what it is. That was something that was league plan, and Pete told him, I ain't gonna, it was the old Gary Templeton. If I ain't starting, I ain't departing. And what he meant was, if I'm not in that All Star game, he does. He's not even the first guy in the Mets you send. They only had one representative. Who were the league chosen guys? It was Pete. And who else? Well, there's a there's a few of them, but he was yeah. definitely chosen by the league. There's a breakdown on MLB.com about who was the players' vote, who was the league vote, and you could say, well, look at how many home runs he's hit. There's there's. Two guys on the Mets I would have put ahead of him, Nimmo and Robertson, and I cleared this with Jolly Olive, who's the biggest Mets fan that I know. He's like, yeah, Pete has been okay. So, once again, this isn't a shot at Pete Alonso, but guys, let's stop holding the league hostage and let's at least come out, league, and say, you know what? We had to give Pete the role because we wanted him at the home run derby, which I'm sure they'll do. I have so you you it. think that uh, they believe the all the Homer Derby is a bigger draw and that's they really wanted him in, and that's the conspiracy. Yes. 
Yes, 100%. And I wouldn't be shocked if they made a backroom deal with Vlad. Vlad's had a terrible year. Really, he's he's a, like a one-war player. He's a sub-800 OPS guy. There's a gazillion Blue Jays already going. Now, I once again, I love watching Vlad. I like watching Pete Alonso. But let's call it what it is here. Interesting to me. Okay. Like I I know what you're saying, but in my mind, like those guys don't like make me want to watch the home run derby. I know oh, I, I, I know I know Pete has won two of them and he is kind of perfect for the home run derby, but like I'm not tuning in to watch Pete. Now Shohei, like you, you tune in. There's a few guys you tune in to watch, and I don't know if Pete is. Maybe that's just my assumption. Maybe you guys are tuning in to watch him. I don't know. I like the I like well, the conspiracy theories on the show. We don't dabble in conspiracy theories too often no, here. We don't. We don't. Because I really am not a big believer in them. But this one, I, I, I think it's so apparent that it's right in front of our faces. Guy has a chance to three peat. Guy loves it. I mean, he will be doing this until he's 60. He's going to be like a master's champion. They're going to just keep inviting him back. Do you think it should be so like in the dunk contest in the NBA, which I think is, is used to be the it used to be great, right? They don't right. have to be all stars in that. No. So, in fact, almost so none why? Of them are. So you're saying, okay, I'm going to dig into this a little bit. You said we have some extra time here. You're saying, Pete was said, I'll do the home run derby only. You think Pete started this conspiracy? Yes. I don't think there's a question about it. I don't think there's a question about it. Go ask him if he would have done it if he hadn't been selected to the all-star team. And by the way, I don't blame him for that. The lure of a million dollars when he's about to make $200 million. But do you have a million to, dollars? Is- my question is, do you have to be an all-star to compete in the home run derby. Is that historically how it's been? No. I mean, Julio's not competing in the all-star game. Now, granted, he is a Seattle Mariner, and he wants to have a role in the game. Yeah, I guess Brian Dozier did that in 2014 when it was at Target Field. Yeah. I mean, did uh, Joey Gallo did it a couple years ago. I forgot if he was an all-star at the time. But, no, it's not always all-stars. It's just these guys value their time so much. There you go. Uh, Dan Rourke just let us know that uh, Cespedes won it and wasn't an all-star in 2015. Uh, wait, 2015 or 2013? Okay, so there's there's a bunch of examples of this. I'm I'm I don't know. I'm curious. 2013. Curious, curious, okay. curious. Now you got you got my um, you got my uh, tinfoil hat on now. And yeah, and I'm not saying Pete Alonso's a bad guy for doing this. I'm just saying the league is they're going to cover this up. But this is exactly how it went down. All right, now we got to speed up a little bit. Uh, among those who did not make it first wave, first wave through, because I think there will be some replacements here. Fernando Tatis Jr. Would it have been a good or bad thing for baseball had he made the All Star team? I don't think it really matters either way. Part of me thinks it's it would be a good thing if he's in the All Star game because he is one of the league's more exciting players and when guys mm-hmm. watch him like I'm in LA so I get a lot of the youth I talk to them about Fernando Tatis and a lot of the first things that they mention are oh well, he was on steroids and like well that that is part of the story there I think mm-hmm. around the nation it's probably a little bit different I think guys still really like Fernando Tatis I think most of the people I talk to are just Dodger fans um so I don't think it would be bad for them for him to be in the game I do think and and Rosenthal uh, came out with an article about this, and he made an assumption, and I kind of second his assumption that it, you know, the players didn't vote him in because of that. Like you're you're one thing that ball players in those clubhouses value is um, holding you accountable for stuff like this. They're not going to vote you in. This is not in. true. This is not. What true. do you mean? Or they're uninformed. I would like to introduce you to Emmanuel Classe. Sure, voted sure, sure. in by the players and also received an 80 game suspension for PEDs. Now, there are guys that fly under the radar with it. And a lot of time, yes, like a reliever flies under the radar. Or if it happens to you in the minor leagues 
or early on your career. This is like this was like right in front of our face at when he was at the top of the game, when he was the poster child for everything, when he was dancing all over the field, doing everything. Bam, he gets hit with a suspension. It's just it it becomes a little bit different in players' minds. Because he's more popular, because he's the guy because they handed him the keys to the pitch. Because they handed him the keys to the sport right away. Okay, well, that's some bullshit then. The next time that we say that players are, should only be voting for stuff, let's go back to right here, right now. Because, by the way, y'all, Emmanuel Classe doesn't deserve I, to be there on his merits I, alone. He has not I been good enough this. to be an all-star. And he he had the same suspension that Fernando Tatis Jr. had. So, players, if you're going to care about Tatis Jr. and you're going to vote a Class A in, there's something wrong there. Inconsistency drives me nuts. I said this about the all-star selection process. First of all, it's completely flawed, as we all know. We're talking about it right now. But the players, like, they're not sitting down for a day and doing research before they fill out their all-star ballots. They're not. It's a piece of paper that gets handed to you, a, a packet, excuse me, and you fill it out. And then you give it back. A lot of times you're doing it right before the game in between BP and the game. And you just kind of do things. Okay. So it's not like this is like, oh, the players were holding everyone to these crazy high standards and doing It's not like that, people. It's just not. And whether that's good or bad, whatever, but that's the truth. Okay. But I do believe in the, a lot of players' minds, they remember Fernando Tatis more than they remember Emmanuel Clase. Absolutely, Bottom line. they do. Absolutely, they do. So here's what you do. You put I think on pitchers, your players. I ballot. think pitchers get well, pitchers get away with it way more. There's other guys oh, around the league. No I don't want to. I don't want to start naming names because I'm over it. But like, pitchers get away with it more than position players do. I would agree with you 100. percent Then you know what? Let's either take it seriously or not. You guys should have one day where you come in. Hey guys, everybody's got to be here at 1:30 for a seven o'clock game. For a half hour, you're going to do the ballots. We're going to explain it to you. And in there, you could put a little thing about what he's done this year and if they tested positive for PEDs. Put it on there. If it's so important to the players, let everybody know. Because I would agree with you here. I think most players don't remember that Emmanuel Classe got suspended. Yes. And, But I'm just making the point here that we're going to be inconsistent. So at least give everybody the information so then you can make up your mind. If you feel like, hey, they serve their penalty, then they get to move on. I personally think that it would be a good thing for him to be there, because I do want to sew up this point. If he's willing to really show some contrition on a national level, not with the San Diego beat writers around him in the dugout at Petco Park. We're talking about really... Now, I understand why the league wouldn't want it, right? This is their crown jewel. Although they do a million different things. They have this freaking baseball draft the same weekend they have the all-star game which is another problem but you understand what i'm saying like they don't want that stink around them but i think it could be a new positive spin if done properly which once again i don't necessarily trust the baseball. time has passed for that the time has passed for that like he had a chance to do everything a certain way and he did things the way that he has done them I, i'm I know, a, here's where i'm here's where level. i'm well it depends what you consider a national level i mean we played his apology on our show I'm talking about where all of the national media is gathered in one area. You think you want, like, at the All-Star game, he just stands up in front of everybody and apologizes again? It's never going to happen in a million no, years. No, but I think that there's a way to discuss it. Okay. That's all. I had something else to That's say. All. Now, we're, we're kind of getting off sorry. topic a little bit. But I, I, I also, like, I'm on the camp, or in the camp of, if you serve your suspension, you served your suspension. Right, right. Me too. Hey, there is one thing I want to clean up. Pete Alonso is not the defending champion. Uh, Soto is. I want to thank everybody in the chat for reminding me of that. Um, Pete he's a two-time a champ. Come... Right, he's a two-time champ. So sorry about that. You can take out all of your comments from the YouTube. Yeah, he got things. beat. Sure he got beat enough. early on in in last year's he did. Uh, derby. He did. You who know took what? Him out? Did Vlad was... take him out? I don't remember who took him out, but I remember Pete Moylan catching one of his home runs. That was fun. Hey, uh, I want to tell you a little bit about Bird Dogs, our presenting sponsor. They have got the shorts of the summer. They're stretch khaki shorts designed for a slimmer fit through the thigh and the leg, giving you a truly sculpted look. I wore a pair this weekend. Michelle's like, have you dropped a few pounds? I was like, you know, I'm just wearing my Bird Dog shorts. 
It's like, oh, they look great on you. I said, thank you very much. Bird dog shorts, they fit way better than those regular shorts made of the stiff, restrictive cotton. Those things are terrible. And they have fixed the issue by inventing cloud knit fabric. It looks just like khaki, but stretches all the way. Nice, slimmer, tighter fit. And Bird Dog also uses the anti-stink sweat wicking fabric. Keeps you cool and dry all day long. Nice thing for me is they kind of got the built-in underwear. I got to like it. I'm telling you, man. One less layer down there. Keeps the boys protected. Keeps them cool. Keeps you feeling and looking fine. So head on over to birddogs.com slash today for a free Yeti-style tumbler with your order. Did you hear me? You're going to all these barbecues. It's July 4th tomorrow. Head on over to birddogs.com slash today for a free Yeti-style tumbler. You'll look great. You'll drink well. You'll feel fine. Thanks to Bird Dogs. All right, dog. Talked a lot about the Atlanta Braves, but with good reason. They've got eight All-Stars for the first time ever. They also have another eight-game winning streak. Third time they've done that already. Obviously, we're going to have recency bias on this question. But is this considered one of the best offenses of the last couple decades? I haven't really gone back and looked at every single offense in the last 20 years. Um, I, I do want to speak on just how good this offense is. Um, if you pare it down to 100 at bat plate, you have to have 100 plate appearances. Um to qualify for the stat I'm about to give you, they have a, a, excuse me, ten dudes over 102 OPS plus. Mm-hmm. So they have over a starting lineup full of guys that are better than league average hitters. And then at the top of that, we have a guy Ronald Acuna Jr. who's going off playing like an MVP. We have Sean Murphy playing like an MVP. We have Matt Olson playing like an MVP. So they have length in the lineup. And they have the top end where you're getting these MVP performances. It's exactly what you formulate uh, in in a lab if you want an offense. They're hitting homers. They're getting on base right now in the big leagues. They're second in average, second in OBP, first in OPS, third in runs, first in homers. They're even seventh in stolen bases. They're just getting it done all over the place, which kind of brings me to my next point. Yes, this is an unbelievable offense and i think what we're watching is really special they're going to be around together for a long time but we Mm -hmm. just did a little segment on talking baseball and i just didn't realize how dang good another offense is in this league the texas rangers first in average first in lbp first in runs second in ops like so for me to sit here and say this is the best offense in the last i don't like yeah they're really good but like there's this Rangers team that has just been almost just as good as them, if not better. So to answer your question, Fair I think, yeah, they're one of the best teams. I'm not going to just put the crown on them right now because there's another team in the league doing almost identical things to them. Spencer Strider, who made the all-star team, I thought made it had a pretty appropriate quote. He said, you don't have to be perfect pitching with our lineup. That means something. When a pitcher, there's plenty of pitchers out there who are like, man, if I give up more than two runs, do we have any shot of winning today? If Spencer Strider gives up two runs in the first, he's like, yeah, bad inning. We'll be okay. Because he just, he knows that this team can, and oh, by the way, very rarely are the Braves losing after the first inning. You know, they're averaging more than a run per first inning this year. They're going nuts. They're insane. Watching them play, you just realize like they're, I mean, they're the team to beat. Right. They don't they have are, the best record I, in the game. The Rays still have the best record in the game. But if you're asking me who's the best team in baseball now, it's the Braves. Right. I think they're the best. Yes. I mean, and we'll, it, they're going to be well represented up in Seattle, and they deserve to be. Uh, they've got seven guys that are on pace to hit more than 25 homers. They do remind me a little bit of the teams I rooted for in the mid-90s with the then Cleveland Indians, right? They've got a guy at the top of the lineup who had significantly more power than Kenny Lofton. Lofton stole bases at a time where the rules weren't, you know, I mean, we could say, we have to say it. Ronald Acuna is is the beneficiary of the new rules, right? The step-off rules. And teams just aren't doing a good job. They haven't figured out quite how to hold runners yet. Kenny Lofton was stealing bases at a time where you could throw over umpteen times and not be penalized for it, and he was stealing 70 bases a year. 
in front of Omar Vizquel, Carlos Baerga, Albert Bell, Eddie Murray, Manny Ramirez, Jim Tomei, Sandy Alomar Jr., Paul Sorrento. That was a lineup that could that could ball with the one that we're talking about. Even the 2009 Yankees, Teixeira, Cano, Jeter, A-Rod, Posada, Damon, uh, Matsui, Swisher. Pretty good lineup. I said Cano. Dan Work, don't worry. Yeah, go ahead and call her. I messed up. The Braves do have the best record in baseball. They don't have the yeah, most wins in baseball, but their did. winning percentages, thanks to uh, JC Tony in the chat, 675 winning percentage for them, which is nuts. 655 for the race. Stand yeah. corrected. So, uh, Nick Swisher would probably say, Yo, bro, R090, bro. Yeah, better. Whatever. All right. Um, other big news. We had our first kind of monumental trade. Aroldis Chapman on his way from Kansas City to Texas for a couple of pitchers. Um, he did pitch a scoreless inning. I b- believe it was the seventh on Sunday, but then the Astros got to the Rangers after that and have taken two of the first three. They'll wrap up that series Monday afternoon. Other than that, what caught your eye on the field? I'm going to cheat on this one. I'm going to go off the field, actually, but it pertains to on the field, if you know what I mean. Uh, okay. Mike Trout went and did an interview with our good buddy Todd Frazier. And I think he was sending a message to front office, to ownership. He said, he's talking about Shohei. And this is no, like, this isn't groundbreaking. Everyone knows this. But to hear it out of Mike Trout's mouth is a different thing. He said, the best thing we can do to keep Shohei around is to make the playoffs. And they're close right now. But to me, if you're Mike Trout and you go out and say that, that is, hey, guys, we whatever help we need, go do it because we need to keep this guy around. He says, I'm going to do everything in my power to keep him around, but the best thing we could do is to make the playoffs. And when Mike Trout, who doesn't give a lot of interviews, doesn't go on record a lot and, and, and do all those types of things, when he talks, you better listen. So I thought that was very interesting. Does that, does, is that, if they weren't already going and planning on making major moves, I think this puts them over the hump right there. And I want to see that happen. I desperately, Chris Rose, want to see Mike Trout and Shohei Otani play together in the postseason. I really do. And I wouldn't even mind if they ran it back and Shohei decided to stay with the Angels. I think that's unlikely. Uh, but seeing them play together, you know, over the last whatever, how many years has been? Six years. I haven't really appreciated it until like this year because I think now when it's coming possibly to an end, it just is really pulling uh, at my baseball heart, if you will. So I thought that was really interesting to see him say that. And I think it might push ownership just a little bit more to keep them around. Mm -hmm. Okay. Possible. Um, For me, two things on the field. Congratulations to the Kansas City Royals. They upend the L.A. Dodgers. First time all year they win a series against a team with a winning record. And the Boston Red Sox continue to own the Toronto Blue Jays a year after the Blue Jays did it to them. Last year, 3-16 and against Toronto. They swept the series north of the border this weekend, did Boston, even with their ailing pitching that got worse because Garrett Whitlock was removed after the first inning. They are now 7-0 and against Toronto. Pretty good stuff uh, by Boston. I know they're in last place in that division, but still, um, I think they've done. I think they've done some nice things, no question. All right, Ploof is not a dog owner. I am a dog owner. I love my girl Sydney, and a little bit more than a month ago, we changed her food to Farmer's Dog. That is the way to go, people. I'm telling you because Sydney is a rescue. She's we're not exactly how old she is. We think she's around 12, but whether you've got an older dog or you got a brand new pup, you want to treat your doggy with the respect. And that means giving them the best food possible to keep them healthy, to keep their coat looking good, to have them feeling great about themselves. Farmer's dog delivers them fresh, healthy dog food. It is recommended by vets out there. It is nutritionally balanced and made from human grade ingredients in safe, clean kitchens. The traditional dry and wet dog food options, those things are processed. It's ugly. Don't give it to your dog. They use much lower quality ingredients than they claim to. 
They're extremely difficult to portion as well. Here's the thing about Farmer's Dog. You fill out a questionnaire online. You tell them about the size of your dog, the activity of the dog. They send food that is prepackaged. It's portioned out for your dog, and it is easy. You just you keep it in the freezer. Then you put it in the fridge overnight. Next day, it's ready to go. We give Sydney a quarter of the bag every meal. She loves it. She cannot wait. We open the fridge even for just one of our snacks. She thinks she's getting fed farmer's dog again. I'm like, well, slow your rolls, Sid. We'll get to you in a little bit. So once again, doesn't matter if your dog is young or old. It's always the right time to begin investing in their health. And you are going to get 50% off your first box at thefarmersdog.com slash John Boy. Did you hear me? Half off thefarmersdog.com slash John Boy. Go do that today. Before we get out of here on the podcast and YouTube side of things, did you see the cat get on the field? I believe this was in Anaheim. Mm-hmm. I mean, this wasn't a mountain lion. It was a cat. What What's going on with these two ladies? I think maybe they thought it, it could have been a raccoon. Like, cats are... I'm uh, not, like, going to sit there. What are, they, what are they supposed to do? Pet this, like, random cat that's in the, the stadium? And these are these are players' wives here. So, like, they, they're expected to be guarded a little bit there. And that cat just they? got past security. Yeah, that's the Fletcher's wives. Oh, Fletcher bro okay. Wives. Oh, yeah. Fletcher bro's wives. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. Well, you know what? We're gonna have to. We're gonna have to talk to uh, the Fletchers. Oh, all I, I like. That. I would. I. I might have reacted the same. Okay. You don't know what the, these cats, man. And you know what? I really appreciate cats because they're they let you know what kind of mood they're in right away, and they don't need you. But when they want you, they'll come up to you and be the cutest things ever. But they also be scary, man. Mm-hmm. A little bit. I'm okay. I'm okay with the reaction here. I, I'm not going to fault them for this. Okay. All right. I'd like to see what Fair you would enough. do if that happened to you, Chris. Probably would have jumped. Probably would have jumped. <laughs> it's easy for me to judge from this far away. Yeah. Uh, don't forget about our bird dogs question of the week. Get that in by Thursday night so we can use it on Friday's show. We can make you rich, famous, and give you a baseball today teacher. Fun show today. A lot of controversy and a conspiracy theory to boot. For our one-of-a-kind producer, Dan Rourke, and the ever-talented and handsome Trevor Plouffe, I am Chris Rose. We will see you 4th of July because we're always working here on Baseball Today.